Our story begins around the year 40 BBY, eight years before Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. It centers around Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn and his 17-year-old Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, after escaping a deadly encounter at Wambo the Hutt's palace while on a mission to the planet Teth, the pair of Jedi returned to Coruscant, and Qui-Gon formally addressed the Jedi Council about the incidents. During the encounter, Qui-Gon explains some of the troubles he's been having as Obi-Wan's master. The two were struggling to communicate due to their completely opposite natures. While Qui-Gon was a bit of a rogue Jedi, Obi-Wan was very literal and proper, requiring specific instructions from his master, and he tended to be a stickler for the rules, especially in regards to the Jedi Council, their teachings, and their rulings. Obi-Wan had also struggled to see the importance of many tasks assigned to him from his master, such as his extensive research into old Jedi prophecies. As a young student, Qui-Gon had been introduced to prophecies and quickly gained an interest, while Qui-Gon's master, Count Dooku, had been wary of his Padawan's interest into dangerous teachings, he decided to guide him through these prophecies and study them together. After some time away, and as an older Jedi, Qui-Gon returned to his study of these prophecies, tasking Obi-Wan to aid in his research. After the Jedi Council was seemingly finished with their line of questioning for Qui-Gon, they presented him with the highest honor possible to a Jedi, a seat on the Jedi Council. Shocked because of his rebellious nature towards the Council, Qui-Gon had asked to meditate upon this decision. Taking a seat on the Jedi Council would also mean forfeiting his place as Obi-Wan's master, potentially resolving his current predicament. While meditating upon his decision and Obi-Wan's future, the Jedi Council had approached him to inform him of a new mission he had been requested for. A political dispute had broken out on the planet Pygel between their government and a former theater troupe turned activist group called the Opposition. A governance treaty was to be signed into place by an orphaned 14-year-old heiress to the Pyjali throne, Princess Fanry. She would secede her royal power over to the planet's monarchy, allowing the planet to join the Galactic Republic, as well as allow a major hyperspace corridor to be established by an influential group within the galaxy the Zerka Corporation. The joining of the Republic and establishment of the Hyperspace Corridor were extremely important to not only the Republic, but also the Pajali Monarchy. The opposition had begun to denounce this treaty, and in doing so would pull off many non-violent political stunts. The government feared tensions would rise and things would become violent as the signing date approached. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan were to aid in the settlement of this disagreement and provide protection to Princess Fanry. During this meeting, Obi-Wan had learned of his master's invitation to the Jedi Council and became extremely hurt, both by the fact that Qui-Gon Jinn would no longer be his master, but more importantly, his master had hid this from him. This caused the rift that had already been brewing between the master and apprentice to grow. Qui-Gon was surprised he had been personally requested for this mission. It was revealed to him because of the princess's young age, a regent was put into place to rule until the signing of the treaty at the princess's coronation, this regent being an old friend of Qui-Gon's, Jedi Rael Advaros. Rael Advaros had known Qui-Gon for many years, and the two had shared the same master, Count Dooku. Rael was an unusual Jedi, being taken in for training at a late age, which caused his outlooks on Jedi teachings and ways of living to be very controversial. Rail before his assignment on Pygel, had lost a Padawan in battle. A slicer dart was used to control the mind of his Padawan, causing her to become violent. Rail had to make the unfortunate decision to kill his Padawan before she could cause further harm. This incident rattled him deeply, and he sought to seemingly make amends with his past by raising Princess Fanry and becoming her regent. Once the Master and Apprentice arrived on Pygel, violent encounters did occur. A slicer dart, similar to the one used on Rail's Padawan, was fired into the window of the princess's bedroom. As well, during a traditional Pajali event, a droid attempted another assassination of the princess. Rail felt these attacks were most certainly the opposition, and most likely were used to provoke Rail, stinging old wounds. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan began a series of investigations into these incidences, as well as for potential hotbeds for the opposition's operations. During these investigations, the Jedi ran into two jewel thieves, Pax and Rahara. Pax was a human who had been raised by protocol droids, and Rahara was a former slave of the Zerka Corporation. 
The two were hunting for kyber crystals on Pyjol's moon, but were only able to locate a jewel that resembled kyber, but lacked many of its properties, known as colon crystals. Qui-Gon struck an agreement not to report the thieves, so long as they aided them on their mission to locate those behind the recent attacks on the princess. The group was soon able to locate a large cache of weaponry on Pyjol's moon. The Jedi investigated and were attacked by a military organization using a shield impervious to Jedi's lightsabers. When all seemed lost, a mysterious group of fighters came to their aid. The opposition had arrived to help the Jedi and wanted an explanation for why they were being framed for the attacks on Princess Fanry. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan allowed the opposition to explain themselves. The military-like forces they had just encountered were nicknamed the Black Guards and were most likely the group responsible for the recent attacks on the princess. The opposition then began to explain how much influence the Zerka Corporation had over the Pajali government and that the governance treaty was in fact a way for the corporation to gain control over the penal system, allowing them to imprison individuals for minor crimes, sentencing them to hard labor, effectively turning them into legal slaves. One night while on Pajal, Qui-Gon awoke from a dreamlike vision of the future, depicting the signing of the Governance Treaty and Fanry's coronation. The vision, while not fully clear to Qui-Gon, meant great danger for Fanry. Nervous and cautious of this vision of the future, Qui-Gon refused to take part in the signing, which would ultimately mean no Galactic Republic representative would be present, causing the ceremony to be postponed. This enraged Rail, as well as the Pajali and Zerka officials. Obi-Wan was still bitter towards his master's attempt to hide the Jedi Council position from him, as well as his ever-growing obsession with the Jedi prophecies. Qui-Gon's recent visions hadn't helped Obi-Wan's confidence in his master's current mental state. Nervous of his defiance of the Republic's requests, Obi-Wan would eventually contact the Jedi Council for a resolution. While unorthodox, Obi-Wan would be assigned to take Qui-Gon's place, meaning the ceremony could continue with or without him involved. While rightfully upset with his Padawan, Qui-Gon eventually came to accept Obi-Wan's reasonings and allowed the ceremony to continue without his direct involvement. The Jedi, aided by Pax and Rahara, would return to investigations, looking deeper into a Zerka Corporation mining facility in an attempt to locate the Black Guards. The Black Guards did arrive to raid the facility of Colon Crystals during their investigation, and another skirmish broke out. In an attempt to rescue the Jedi, Rahara piloted her ship towards them, only to crash land. Zerka droids investigated the wrecked ship and identified her as a runaway slave, taking her back into their custody. Pax became devastated by this news, as did the Jedi. Realizing their strong arming of the Jewel Thieves had put them into serious danger, Qui-Gon made attempts to purchase her freedom directly from the Zerka Corporation, to no such luck. The only way to free Rahara would be to break her out of the Zerka facility she had been brought to. Pax eagerly agreed to help. With just a few days away from the princess's coronation and the signing of the Governance Treaty, the leader of the opposition decided to turn herself in to the Pajali authorities. She was brought in front of Pajali officials, as well as the Jedi and his apprentice. The opposition had prepared a data pad only accessible to Qui-Gon, with information on a Black Guard base on Pyjal. Rail, Pyjali officials, and the Jedi set out to investigate. To their surprise, the base was completely empty of life, but filled with weapons, as well as the same anti-lightsaber shields the Jedi had previously encountered with the Black Guards. Qui-Gon soon suspected somebody had tipped off the terrorist group, and his suspicions turned towards one of Fanry's royal guards. With no solid proof, the Jedi had to proceed as normal. The day of the coronation and signing soon arrived, and although wary of his visions, and mostly for his Padawan's safety, Qui-Gon allowed the ceremony to proceed. While not taking official part in the ceremony, Qui-Gon felt it best to attend the event to provide protection if his visions did indeed come true. During the ceremony proceeding as it should, Princess Fanry stabbed an official and called out to her royal guard to activate several layers of shields, the same type of shields the Jedi had encountered with the Black Guards, sealing in Fanry, several officials, as well as Obi-Wan. Fanry's guard held Obi-Wan at blaster point as Fanry addressed the crowd. 
She stated how this treaty would only benefit Zerka Corporation and remove her royal power. Zerka Corporation will own Pyjol no more, she said as she dubbed herself as the rightful queen. Qui-Gon, seeing his vision play out in front of him, rushed to the shield, desperately trying to break through, as Fanry gestured to have Obi-Wan killed. Left to no other option, Obi-Wan ignited his lightsaber, thinking it would be useless within the various shields. The saber ignited a strange orange color and easily passed through the guard's shield, injuring him. Frightened by this realization, Fanry and her loyal assistants fled the ceremony to set forth attacks on Zerka's facilities. The Jedi soon realized that not only was the princess in charge of the Black Guards, but she had tampered with Obi-Wan's lightsaber, swapping out the Kyber crystal to what they thought would be a useless Kolin crystal. This proved to be a mistake, as it was the only thing able to penetrate their shields. While Qui-Gon and Rael set off to stop the princess, Pax and Obi-Wan set off to rescue Rahara, who was located at the same facility Fanry was set to attack. Pax snuck into the Zerka facility as Obi-Wan piloted a ship for their escape. Pax located Rahara, who refused to leave alone, instead leading a slave uprise. Qui-Gon was soon able to get communication to Fanry, who was readying for her attacks. He pleaded with her not to attack the Zerka facility as a slave uprising had been occurring, something she would have been happy to see. Instead, power got to her head, and she attempted to proceed with the attacks anyway. However, her formerly loyal subjects refused to put an end to the chaos, allowing the slaves to escape and destroying the facility from the inside. Once the incident was resolved, Princess Fanry agreed to forego her royal powers, and a new treaty was created and signed, giving Pyjol a true democracy, abolishing slavery, and establishing a hyperspace corridor. The Jedi would return home to Coruscant, as would Rail, who got a long-awaited hollow call before he had left. Count Dooku offered Rail to leave the Jedi Order and come to Sereno to join him, seemingly on the dark side. Rail refused the offer, instead choosing to seek the light. Upon arriving home, Qui-Gon addressed the Jedi Council, not just about his time on Pyjol, but more importantly, his decision on whether he would take a seat on the Jedi Council. To the shock of the Council, Qui-Gon turned down the offer, instead seeking a new path and continuing to train young Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon happily mended their relationship, moving on together stronger and more understanding than they had before. In the final scene of the novel, we meet up with Obi-Wan, years later, during the time period of Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Obi-Wan, now a full Jedi Knight, mourns the loss of his master and readies himself for Qui-Gon's funeral. Thinking of his and his master's rough past seemed like a distant dream, after the two had blazed a new path of great love and respect. While not fully embracing the prophecies Qui-Gon had believed in, he decided to keep true to a promise he had made Qui-Gon upon his death. Train Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One. In a final message to Qui-Gon at his funeral, Obi-Wan softly said, I will train him, Master. I will do everything for him that you would have done. I choose to believe. <laughs>